Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will cover vector operations in respect of the arithmetic operators in R. So by the end of this lesson, you will learn to perform arithmetic operations on vectors. In one of our previous lessons, we learned about the arithmetic operators and their associated symbols for performing calculations in R, as is shown on the screen. Now, we look at how to perform what we call scalar operations on vectors. That is, we perform arithmetic operations on a vector with a single number. This single number, which is called a scalar, is applied over each element in the vector in an arithmetic operation. For example, we have a scalar, 5, which is added to a vector with four items or elements. The result of this calculation is displayed below this operation. This is what actually happened. The scalar 5 gets added to every single element in this vector. And the same is true for all other arithmetic operators. Now let us go to R and demonstrate how we can perform scalar operations on vectors. Now, in R, we proceed to create a vector, and so I would like to name this object vec. We proceed to create a vector of some number of elements, and this happens to be a numeric vector because we are just simply going to include only numbers. So let's have a vector with five elements. And what we are going to do at this point is we are going to perform scalar operations. So that means we need to use a single number and perform arithmetic operations on this particular vector. So for example, if we want to deal with an addition operation, then we can go ahead and say 10 plus, then we just simply give the name of that vector. And when we go ahead and add this, that would mean that the number 10 is added to every single element that is found in this vector. And so this happens to be the result after executing this code. We can also go ahead and do 4 minus vec. And in which case, if you go ahead and execute this, you also end up getting the result. This means that since the 4 comes before this vector in this subtraction operation, every single number in this particular vector is subtracted from the number 4 and the corresponding result is also a new vector which is being displayed in the R console after execution. So we can also go ahead and do something like 5 multiplied by vec. And so when you execute this, you also end up getting the number 5 or the scalar 5 multiplied by every single element in this particular vector. We can also go ahead and bring, for example, the vector itself divided by the number 3. And when you execute, that means every single number in this vector gets divided by the scalar 3. We can also go ahead and raise every single number in this vector to the power of 2 and you will get the result after execution. You can also go ahead and do, for example, modulo operations on that. So we can do vector modulo 2, and that would give you the remainder for each element when it is divided by the number 2. Then we can also do the last arithmetic operation, which happens to be the integer division. And when you do that, every single number would also get divided by this number 3, and only the integer part of the result is being displayed as a new vector which is seen right in the console. Now, with a vector by vector operations, given that we have two vectors, each matching pair of elements in the two vectors are used for the calculation. So for example, we have an addition of two vectors and the corresponding result is also displayed beneath it. And this is what actually happens. Each element in the first vector is added to the corresponding element of that position in the second vector. Now I use the different colors here to show you exactly how I'll perform these calculations on vectors. This is another example where in this calculation, the first vector has two items and the second vector has four items. The elements in the shorter vector are recycled to match the pairs of elements in the second vector. So essentially, the first vector which has two elements, 9 and 6, would be repeated to yield the corresponding length that matches the same number of elements that is found in the second vector and the calculation is being performed and the result will be displayed. In a similar fashion, we are adding two vectors. The first vector has three elements and the second vector has four elements and the corresponding output after the calculation is displayed beneath it. And this is what really happens. 
the three numbers in the first vector or the shorter vector are distributed over every single element in the second vector in their relative positions. So nine gets matched to the number three in the second vector, six gets matched to 10, one gets matched to seven. Now what happens is R recycles over the calculation and begins with the first number in the shorter vector, which is nine, and that gets added to the last element of the second vector. Let's go to R and demonstrate exactly what we are talking about here. In R Studio, let's go ahead and create two vectors to perform vector by vector operations. So I would like to call the first vector as vec1, and I will combine the numbers 2, 9, 0, and let's say 5. And then I will create the second vector. I just simply want to call it vec underscore 2. And I will also combine the numbers 1, 2, 5, and 2. So if I execute these codes, then we see that the vec1 and vec2 are being displayed in the environment window. We will go ahead and perform the vector by vector operations where we get to, for example, in the first situation, we would want to add vec1 plus vec2. And so let's clear the console and execute this line of code. And we end up getting the result to be this. And so what really happens is that because the two vectors have the same number of items, each number is added to the corresponding element in that relative position. So 2 plus 1, 9 plus 2, 0 plus 5, 5 plus 2 in that order. And so that is what gives us this very result. We can go ahead and also, for example, do vec1 minus vec2 and execute. And we will also get that result as well. Then we can multiply these vectors as well. Or we can even go ahead and divide them. So basically, you get the idea. Now, let us go ahead and create another set of vectors. This time, I would like to call this object, let's say, vec length 4, because I am going to create a vector with four items in it. So I would go ahead and have numbers like 5, 9, 1, 3. And then I would create another vector of length 2. So let's say 2 comma 3 and I will execute these two lines of code to store these vectors into these very objects. As mentioned earlier, when you perform an operation between two vectors of unequal lengths, the elements of the shorter vector are recycled to match the length of the longer vector. So essentially, if we go ahead and do something like vec length 2 plus vec length 4 and you go ahead and execute this line of code you end up getting the result to be this what really happens is that r will recycle the element in the shorter vector to match the number of elements in the longer vector so it becomes something like this 2 and 3 which is being recycled or repeated and the result is given to you so that also applies to other operations that you can perform. Like for example, you can go ahead and do minus and that will also give you the same result where the elements in the shorter vector are recycled. It is very important to note at this point that recycling only works when the length of the longer vector is a multiple of the length of the shorter vector. In this case, you will see that we have two items in vec length two and we have four items in vec length four. So this longer vector is a multiple of the number of elements that we find in the shorter vector. And that is how the recycling actually works. So if we go ahead and create another vector, let's call it vec length 4 because I'm going to create a vector with four elements. So let's give a new set of numbers, 8, 1, 3, 1. You know that if I go ahead and execute this line of code, Already, we had made an assignment of 5913 as a vector into this same variable or object. By running this line of code, we go ahead and overwrite the existing assignment and replace what is in this particular variable or vector or object with this particular new vector. So if I go ahead and execute this, and for example, if I decide to print what items are stored in, into this object, which is very obvious, we have 8131. 
and the original assignment will have been overwritten. So I would go ahead and create another vector. Let's call it vec length three. And I would create a vector with three numbers in there. So let's give some numbers like two, zero, four, and execute this line of code. What is gonna happen is we learn that there is some sort of recycling that really happens from the elements of the shorter vector to match the number of elements in the longer vector. But the point is that when the number of elements in the shorter vector and that of the longer vector are not exact multiples of each other, in which case the number four, which is the number of items in the first vector, which is four, is not a multiple of the number of items in the shorter vector, which is three. When you perform calculation with these two vectors, so like for example, if I go ahead and write vec length three plus vec length four, R will still go ahead to do the recycling with what it sees in the operation, but will also give a warning about the discrepancy in the length of the two vectors. So if I execute this line of code, you would see that the number two gets added to the number eight from the shorter vector to the longer vector. The number zero in the shorter vector gets added to the number one in the longer vector. Four gets added to three. And there is not a fourth number in the shorter vector to match this number one. So it recycles over and starts with the number of two. So this number two will now get added to this one here that would give you the last result to be three. So essentially what happens is that if it starts all over again, if it recycles and starts with the number two, R was expecting the remaining two numbers, zero, four, to have exact multiples in this particular vector, which it did not find because this number one happens to be the last item in the longer vector. So R essentially displays that warning message to tell you that when you are adding the two vectors, the longer object length is not a multiple of shorter object length. That would be the same for every other arithmetic operation that you do with these two vectors of unequal length. Actually, warning messages are not errors. And as a matter of fact, when R gives you a warning, it will just simply tell you that there is a result associated with the code that you executed, just that you, you just need to check exactly what you got to see if that is essentially the kind of operation that you wanted to perform in R.